Hi guys, happy Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? Yes, happy Tuesday. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. I am coming from you, uh, coming to you from Wildwood, New Jersey. It's uh, trying to be as sunny as possible, but uh, you know, it's overcast, but it's supposed to get really pretty this weekend, which I'm very, very excited. Hopefully you guys had a wonderful Mother's Day weekend as well. Um, welcome to another edition of To Speak My Truth. I'm already on like, I think this is like my 24th episode. So it's really exciting that you guys are liking it. You guys like the content. And we're getting a little bit um, deeper into the conversations that we've had. And I'm really, really excited about it. I'm really, really happy um, with the progress of it all. Um, I'm glad that my friends have agreed to do it. And people who I don't know who I'm reaching out to are saying yes. Uh, again, this is a one woman production. So I, uh, I'm really excited that it's working out and everyone likes it. Um, if I could, I need to get this angle better, but um, I do want to thank uh, Beauty Counter uh, Makeup for all their help and support with me and uh, Janet Hair Collection. This is actually one of their pieces and I like to look a cool braid with it. So if you guys are looking for um, extensions, weave, wigs, definitely check out Janet Hair Collection because I absolutely love them. Um, I am going to introduce my guest. Uh, Kelsey is a Canadian pole vaulter who I met actually in Paris at a meet and we instantly clicked. It was amazing. She has such a great personality, such a great spirit. Um, and she's a mental health advocate for, I think, I believe it's for, especially for athletes, but I believe it's for um, everyone who feels like there's a stigma against mental health. And she's really been really open and honest about her journey and her experience. So I'm very, very excited because I have not seen her in such a long time. Um, so we got married, so we both just got married. Um, and so I'm very, very excited. Yay! How you doing, boo? I'm good, how are you? <laughs> I love it, you're so cute. <laughs> I'm trying here. How are you doing? I'm doing well. This is like probably the first time I've put on any makeup in <laughs> eight weeks. So thank really? you for that. Oh, yes, girl. You know, if it's, if it's about to be makeup, it's for me. You know this. I know. I was like, um, do I have any normal clothes to put on either? I'm like, I'll just throw a jean jacket over my workout clothes. That works. Um, literally, I have my shorts and my tights on under this because I'm going to work out right after. Same. Um, and I'm like... I have to look at least cute on top. I have to like go and get my summer clothes because I was like running out of outfits. I have no clothes. You I look adorable know. every time. That's why I was like, I have to put some makeup on to try to like at least get like halfway to her level. You always look fabulous. You always have this glow. And I'm sure it happens all the time. Your eyes, they're oh. so gorgeous. So it just was just like, I'm Thank just you. wake up like this. This is exactly what Beyonce was talking about. I woke up like this and that's just you. You're just like, this is me. I guess uh, I'm lucky. My mama gave me my eyes, so it's, oh, I yes. give the credit to her. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet of you. But everything else is going okay? So far, so good? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a weird time. I think everybody can identify with that, um, especially being an elite athlete and being used to, like, living with a goal on the calendar. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, is this what real life is like? You just, like, do life with no goal in front of you I'm so confused dude I literally thought the same thing I was just like so this is what my retirement's gonna look like like I just can wake up and eat whatever I want like I can drink at two o'clock if I feel like it like is this it like I'm like so what are you guys like working towards and my husband's like what are you talking about like we go to yeah. work and I because of course we live in four-year cycles like yeah, you know what I mean? So, and I think it's good. Like I'm trying to really enjoy this time and to realize that there is life outside of track and field and outside of pole vault. And I am enjoying it. And I think that's yeah. important. Um, yeah. I just don't want to enjoy it too much to the point where I don't <laughs> want to go back. <laughs> go back into it. Oh yeah. I had a yeah. We have a meeting with my team uh, every Monday at around 9.30 AM. And I was just kind of like, I stepped on the scale for the first time in two months and I'm like five pounds heavier. And I was like, I want to let you guys know I'm five pounds heavier, but I don't feel it. Like I feel really mm -hmm. good. I feel healthy. Like 
I'm from watching you and Katie, I'm just like, I could be this weight. And if I jump, you know, six, seven, that's it. Yeah. This is what it is. So it's kind of nice that I'm like, I told my coaches and we're planning for the future. And um, it's definitely yeah. been different. But I've honestly, I've take I've looked at it like the glass half full. I have enjoyed the rest, I guess, mm -hmm. like the mental, like, okay. Like, once they said it was postponed, I was like, okay. Like, I took a deep breath. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I you don't even it. realize, like, when you're in it, how stressed out you are working toward that goal. And Katie said something that really stuck with me. She was like, seriously, the day that the 2016 Olympic trials ended, my mind was focused on 2020. And I can totally identify wow. with that. It's like every day there's that low level of stress, no matter how far yes. out it is from the Olympics. And so yes. when it was taken off the table this summer, it was, it was like this weird feeling of relief, which honestly, I'm still processing. I'm like, why did I feel relief about that? But I think it's just because the nature of the situation, everything yeah. was so up in the air that it was causing a lot so of stress. So much stress. Yeah. So much stress. And I think mm -hmm. that's why I think everyone kind of had that little bit of breath, like of relief, because it was so stressful. Like, okay, well, what's the next person doing that's out, you know, outworking me when usually like, that's like your mental process, you keep going, you keep fighting. But then it's like, well, we're all on different levels. I'm in New Jersey, I'm right near New York. So New yeah. York and New Jersey athletes, everything's shut down. Yeah, um, and I'm in Tennessee and things have like opened back up. Like I was yeah. able to go to the gym this week and get a lift in. So it was awesome. Yeah, it was like, I, the funny thing was, I was right back to where I was before. So I'm like, okay, I must not have lost that much. Like just doing something is enough. And I'm trying to have grace for myself. And I hope other people are having grace for themselves too. Like, it's okay if you don't feel super motivated every single, every day, single day to yes. get up and to do your like warm up and all of the little <laughs> things. I know that there's people who are out there and I'm inspired by them. They're posting stuff like, I didn't want to do it today, but I made myself and like, I got it done. I'm like, go you. I've had some yep. days where I didn't want to do it. So I didn't do it. I didn't do it. That's so, very true. It, it, and it's so, and it's very true. And that's what I keep telling people. Like I'll wrap things up and I'm just like, guys, please know that if you don't feel like doing it, like don't feel like you have to watch everybody and be like, I need to get up and do something. I have never enjoyed more sitting on my couch, having a glass of wine and watching Netflix. Yeah, and like for sure. Binge watching. Like, it's just nice. Like, it's just so like, it's just different. But I, I definitely have given myself grace. I've forgiven myself. I've loved exactly who I am, where I am right now. And I think that's an important thing. And I, that's why I really wanted to talk to you because you do, you're a big advocate for that. I mm -hmm. feel like for both of our journeys, we've had a pretty interesting journey. Um, it hasn't been like, obviously the easiest and I can't say that everybody's has but money and security and things like that also relieve a little bit of stress mm -hmm. where that's not necessarily what happens with us all the time yeah I mean I feel like I can speak for myself and I'm willing to admit where I fall in the grand scheme of things and Though I have had success and I'm proud of the success that I've had. I'm an Olympic finalist. I've made mm -hmm. two world championship teams, multiple other Canadian teams. That's amazing. And I'm proud of those accomplishments. But at the same time, I can still look at where I fall in like the world rankings. And with the way the past four years have gone, I'm not in that top tier of athletes. Like just because I had success once doesn't mean mm -hmm. I just stay there and everything's great. And I can embrace the life of a professional athlete. Yeah. For me, it's really it's really still, it's a passion and it's a hobby. I'm not able to like support myself off of what I earn in track and field. Yes. And that's okay. Like that doesn't mean that I don't have a place in the sport. Like yeah. if I love it and I want to do it and I'm willing to, to work through the hard parts, then I deserve a place in the sport just as much as anyone else. And I'm never going to count myself out because I've I've been at that place before where I'm the true underdog and I have mm -hmm. performed. So yeah. I try not to let those things overtake what I'm trying to do for myself. Mm -hmm. um, but that's definitely a struggle. And I'm sure you've dealt with that as well. Just the, the mental stress of feeling like, do I belong here? Yeah. And not Absolutely. feeling like you have that validation always And track and fields, just a hard sport. There's not yeah. as many opportunities as other sports. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I definitely, and people always compare it, like, to try to make me feel better. Like, oh, you know, if you were, yeah, what your rent right now as a tennis player, you'd be making this much. Or a baseball player, you'd be making, I'm like, I know. But I'm You're not. like, cool, can I rewind <laughs> 20 years and put this effort toward tennis? <laughs> right? So I guess that's like the little things, but I definitely... I've just kind of, in this instance, I've just made a way for myself, and I'm doing the show because it's something that I love to do. Um, I've spent time with my husband. I've been working on the house, and I'm just enjoying it. And so for me, I know that I know that next summer's Olympics are my last Olympics, and I retire. And so I'm just being a little bit more forgiving of, like, myself. And just I want to enjoy the journey and be happy. If it's a good meet or a bad meet, it doesn't matter. And that's something that I brought up with my coaches yesterday was I got an email from my agent and he was like, okay, meets are coming back up August to October. And so that was like such a big, like, whoo, back to reality kind of thing. Yeah. And then I just saw that the Diamond League put out their dates with their, uh, their meets. Um, are you planning on competing this summer? Well, summer, fall? I mean, honestly, I feel like for me, I've been taking it day by day because I okay. haven't been able to pole vault for seven or eight weeks or something yeah. like that. So with pole vault, I can't just like jump back into competition in a matter of two weeks. It's a process to work yes. back to my long run. Now, if there's small meets within driving distance, I would maybe consider doing them for fun from a short run, yeah. just to kind of stay sharp and stay fresh. Um, but it really depends on what type of access I'm able to get in the next couple weeks. And right now it's not looking like the high school track is going to open up. UT is closed down because it's an NCAA school. Yeah. So I'm not going to put pressure on myself to try to compete this summer, especially because the marks aren't going to count to qualify gotcha. me to the Olympics. So, I mean, my goal this summer is to just stay in shape. And like we talked about, have grace for myself, enjoy mm -hmm. life without a track schedule and prepare for the coming year because an Olympic year is always very stressful and it requires full commitment. Absolutely. So, and that's yeah. great. And I'm, I mean, that was a big thing. Um, I was like, I don't want to make the, I don't want to make the wrong decision. And my coach was just like, you will. She was like, you, yeah. you can do it or you don't. And for me, I love it because now I feel like I'm growing and I'm so happy with my, my journey in this moment. And so I'm just like, I'm not going to put so much pressure. Like if I do a meet great. And if I shit the bed, Oh, well, like, it is what it yeah. is. Yeah. At least I did and, it. Like I tried, but if not, and I'm like, it just wasn't for me, then I focus and we prepare for next season. Yeah. And, and I, if, I think if it's you important. do get me, it's like, they'll be fun because everybody's going to be like <laughs> ready to bust out of quarantine and just yeah. be around people. And it, I think it will be a different vibe. And I hope that carries into next season. Um, because I think that would be a lot of fun if instead of there being this atmosphere of like stress and focus and seriousness, yeah. if we could all just come out and be like, this is so great. We get to do yeah. what we love. And that, I think that's something that, you know, like people are saying like teachers need to get paid billions of dollars and people are now starting to really appreciate teachers, nurses and doctors and mm -hmm. um, the frontline workers. I think it's something where I hope that athletes come out of this being like, I just love the sport. Like I just mm -hmm. want to enjoy the journey. I love it. Uh, it is, it's something that it, I think we all kind of needed a reset button. I think it's just gotten so stressful for athletes. I don't know if it's for you, but like for me, I'm like trying to rebrand myself. I'm trying to make sure that I'm doing social media in the right way. I'm hoping that, you know, I'm training the right way. I'm being the, the mentor that I need to be. And there was just so much pressure on me. Mm -hmm. And then I was just like, once I, once this all happened, I was like, wow, like I can take a deep breath and just be happy with who I am and fall back in love with what I did, which yeah. is jumping over bars. It's what I like to do. It's, it's fun. It's just, it's, it's entertainment. And that's pretty much what I hope happens at the end. Yeah. And I think we all have realized that it really is about the journey because the reality is we're lucky that they didn't cancel the Olympics. Yeah. Like we're absolutely. very lucky they postponed them and hopefully they go on as planned next summer. But yes. I mean, Let's talk about that. Like, had they been canceled, then every person in every sport who had just dedicated four years of training for this one big goal would have not been able to see that goal through. And I think what that does is it's just a reminder that 
it's really not about that one goal at the end of the tunnel. It's about yeah. what you're learning day in and day out and how you're being challenged and the people that you get to meet and the places you travel and getting the most out of yourself. And yes. that was convicting for me because I feel like I've been very focused on that one goal. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why that is. I just, I don't know if that was my previous coach was very like Olympic focused yeah. or what, but it just made me realize, you know, I really need to be focused more on the process of everything and getting the most out of myself. Good. That's so great. So. I love to hear it. And I love that you're an advocate for it because it's, it's so important and I don't think it's said enough, honestly. Yeah. Um, but you did recently just get married. Yeah. Congratulations on Thank that. you. Six How, months. I, that's so exciting. I can't believe it because when we met in Paris, we were like, we were like deciding whether to like, you know, be single or like get married. Like we were both like in the same, like, I don't know what to do. Like, you know what I mean? And yeah, so I was 20. Like, I was 25. And yes. that was a hard point in my relationship with my husband because we were long distance. And so okay. I always thought I was going to be done after 2016. So when we met, it was, you know, six months after the Olympics and I had decided to keep training. Okay. So that put a huge strain on our relationship. But fast forward, I mean, he's literally the most patient person and he's so selfless and he was able to get a job in Knoxville and move here so I could keep training and the rest is history. So oh, I'm very lucky. That's and I'm so very happy. great. I'm so, yeah. so happy for you. I'm glad that it all worked out. Thank you. Um, I saw your wedding pictures. They were absolutely stunning. Oh, Congratulations. Thanks. And I'm so thanks. glad that like, yeah, you had that supportive partner. That's so important, especially when you're, when you're training, you sometimes just need that person that's just gonna be that rock where you can just be like, you can express exactly how you're feeling. And you yeah. don't always have to be like, on it, you can just be like, I need like a shoulder to cry on or just yeah. I need a hand to hold. And it's great. I'm so happy for you. I'm I mean, so this winter he was coming to my pole vault practices and it was me and him, which was hilarious. And there's actually a meet. We were, I think we were at Akron and I competed terribly. And after the meet, he's like, Kelsey, if you're asking me if you should go up a pole, that's a bad sign. I don't know <laughs> anything about pole vault. And I was like, yeah, that's right. But I just like, I have that trust in him. Yeah. So even though I know he doesn't know what he's doing, I still looked at him and was like, what should I do? So and you're hoping that the practices like sink in and that they can get it after like two practices. Like, yeah. why aren't you a pro? Why yeah. don't you understand? Please, yeah. My coach asked um, my husband, like, oh, do you know where, like, her foot landed? She, he was, like, on the ground. And, like, that was, like, his dead honest response. And she was, like, oh, my God. And I was, like, yeah. are you kidding me right now? Like, just not even, like, not even understanding. But it's great that yeah. we have them because it is good. For me, I love that he doesn't know track. I love that he's just so innocent about it. And so he's just, like, be nice to yourself. Like, it's okay. You look great. Yeah. I'm, like, thanks, hon. I yeah. <laughs> I always, I'm just always so surprised that he literally doesn't care what I do. Like he cares, but he wants me to be happy and he wants me to do something that I'm passionate about. And I put a lot of pressure on myself to like have my next steps figured out. Like, how am I going to go from being an athlete to then trying to start a career and a family at the same time? Like it seems very overwhelming. And yeah. I'm just really thankful that I have a partner that doesn't put pressure on me to have it figured out. And he just truly wants me to be happy. He's like, if you want to be a cycle bar instructor or if you want to work at Subway, he's like, I don't <laughs> even care. Just do what makes you happy. So and isn't that I appreciate that. That's lovely. Yeah. That's so wonderful. I'm so happy yeah. for you. And it's great. Um, I, I, I love that you, again, you're like this symbol of just, you learn from your experiences. You go day by day and you're very open and honest about them. Thank you. Um, well, I, I, I love it because I feel like the sport needs it. I think there's so many different paths that you can take. And I feel like most people, I mean, when I got home from the Olympics, they'll be like, oh, did you win a medal? Like, it's just so, like redundant questions. And just like, I just, there's so much to it, to the journey that people don't know. And mm -hmm. I love getting to know people like you and having you guys be an advocate for positivity, self-love, and just enjoying the journey. And I think that's really important. And things that you learn along the way, you're very open and honest about. And I love that. Um, Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. I mean, I, I feel it. like I'm lucky to meet people like you who just inspire me and are a light. And 
make me excited. Like I was so excited to be around you. I was nervous <laughs> as heck because it was the first meet I'd been to that they're like, yeah, you're going to have a random roommate. And I'm like, oh gosh, like, oh, who is this person going to be? Thing in the world. Yeah, when I know. Say that, I'm like, uh. I know, but then immediately we clicked and we were like, all right, we got this. <laughs> I know. I saw your stuff and it was like organized and I was like, oh, she's clean. That's nice. I'm like, that's so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that's shocking because I don't think I'm a very organized person I must have been putting on my best behavior <laughs> and the funny thing is it was just yeah we did kind of just click and it was really really great and I was really happy about it um, yeah and I do I think when people watch you I think there are younger athletes that do watch us and um I've been asked a couple times about what I would what advice I would give myself when I was younger um, and there's a lot I would say to myself, I'd be like, Come on, <laughs> Me girl, too. Let's, girl, let's go sit down. But if there's <laughs> one thing that you could tell your younger self and you could tell younger athletes today, what would that piece of advice be? Well, I think, I think there's two things depending on if I'm talking to my younger self or if I'm talking to a group of younger athletes. Um, the first thing would be to be very mindful about who you surround yourself with. And that's something that my grandpa years ago would say, he'd be like, you are who your friends are. Let me talk to your friends. Let me check them out. And yeah. as I continue to grow and even into adulthood, I realize that more and more, the people that I'm around, I take on their belief systems and their drive for certain things, their hobbies, the way they eat. Like mm -hmm. you really do become the people that you spend the most time with. Um, and I think as a young person, obviously, young people are always experimenting and getting into yeah. different things. And so you do, you have to be aware of who you're spending your time with. Um, and I think that that kind of rolls into being an athlete. If you want to be successful as an athlete, you have to have the right role models, you have to have the right support system in order to do that. So that would be the big piece of advice, I think. And then the one thing specifically for athletes would be to take care of your body and to mm -hmm. make sure that you're not pushing through injury because I think injury has really been, I mean, every athlete gets injured, but I've pushed myself to the extreme to the point where I've broken my bone and had to, you know, sit out for an extended period of time. And I think yeah. that's really, really hurt my progression in sport. So I would like to see younger athletes just respect their bodies and recognize that when you have an injury, it's okay to take that small period of time off so that you can come back truly healthy and strong and ready to keep progressing in sport. That's great. I, I think, and as a high school, a uh, former high school coach, I definitely think that's really important as well because I never wanted to see the trainer because as soon as I saw the trainer, I knew she was either going to like sit me out or tell me to mm -hmm. rest. And I was like, no, I don't need that. And I mean, knock on wood, I mean, I mean, I'm not going to knock on wood, but before I didn't get injured because I was just like, I'm going to push through. I'll be okay. But yeah. maybe I would have been, a little bit better and a little bit more mindful and understanding of my body. I yeah. would have been like, okay, this is not, um, you know, maybe you're like a broken bone, but maybe it's something that I need to roll out in the morning, right? Maybe I need mm -hmm. to like focus on it a little bit better. And I would have been educated about myself and how I, my body works and stuff. So I don't yeah. think that's, it's, it's really important. And I tell my kids all the time, I'm like, you need to surround yourself with better people. I'm like, you need to <laughs> cut the scrubs out your life and keep it moving. Like, and yeah. they don't understand it and they think I'm being mean. And I'm like, oh, well, like, if you think I'm being mean, if I'm the only mean person in your life, oh, well, like, I need to teach you something. and I need you to understand that. And I yeah. think some of the kids towards like their senior year, they started to realize that. Yeah, you've got to be around people who bring you up, not yes. that where you have to get Absolutely. down on their level. And that's important. Um, but it's true because especially for people, and I don't want to be like mean about this, but there's a, when people who do sports and people who don't, don't, don't do sports, there's very different focuses. So yeah. you need to, if you don't have, if you have friends who aren't in sports, but if they want to go to college for something or they have like ambitions, those are the people that you want to surround yourself with. It doesn't have to be exactly your sport, exactly what you're doing, but they have to want more. And exactly. that, I feel like that's not... And some of the parents would be like upset at me. They'd be like, oh, like you can't. I'm like, I can say whatever I want to because I want your kids to be better. Yeah. Like I want you to, to grow and I want you, if you're the smartest person in the room, then I'm doing my job. And I'm not training your athlete to get ready to um, 
for like a job environment, I'm trying to train them to be the boss. So that they yeah. can be ready. I love that. And I feel like today there's no excuse because everything is so accessible. Like if you don't have someone in your inner circle that you can look up to and be inspired by, yeah. go on social media and find people you can be inspired by. Send them Absolutely. a DM, ask them, what did you do when you were my age? How did you get to where I am? Um, I love reading books on yes. people. Who, like I'm looking, Maria Sharapova's book is right there. I read another one called Brave about Jesse Diggins. She's a gold medalist in cross country skiing. I love reading other people's stories about how they became successful. Like there's something to learn from them. So I mean, yeah, there's, there's always something to learn from somebody, whether it be the good or the bad. You know what I mean? Like if somebody's doing something bad, you're just like, well, thank God you told me that. I don't, I don't have to learn that lesson. I can just keep it moving, which is, which yeah. is, I think it's good that you can take something from every person that you encounter or people that you read from. And that's why I'm, I'm honestly loving Netflix because there's so many different stories. I'm like, this is oh, yeah. amazing. This is we watched great. We watched a great documentary last night. And of course, I'm going to forget what it was called. I think it was called Uncaged, maybe. Okay. It was about a, a, a guy who got electrocuted and lost his arm. And I mean, just one of the most inspiring stories about his transition back into normal life and finding how to adjust after that accident. Wow. And it was pretty inspiring. But I love stories like that. And yeah. And like we said, it doesn't have to be like, I never really had sports role models growing up that I didn't know I didn't really I wasn't into like I was I didn't even know about track and field really when I was younger <laughs> growing up um but I was always aware of what people were doing around me so if there was someone on my soccer team who was better than me or I can think of a couple specific pole vaulters who had success I looked to them and I paid attention to how they carried themselves and yes how they were as athletes were they coachable what did they do in their spare time like I was really interested to know how do they behave and if I do what they do I think I can get better and that's proved true so that's amazing I think just being aware of what the people around you are doing and find good role models in your inner circle is important yeah I think so, so. too that's amazing um yeah. Kels, I really really appreciate you coming on I know we're like I I can't believe we've been talking for 30 minutes that's insane we've been talking uh, for 30 minutes yeah, 26 minutes yeah <laughs> oh my god isn't that crazy I'm that is saying. absolutely insane Yesterday, we I had uh, one of our friends, Joe, and he's like a, a manager for like this, um, for like a country group, producer group thing. And he goes out and finds talent and he owns his own. He's a co-founder of like the Freedom Project, which is like, um, he helps and goes out and does things with like, the military. And literally, I didn't even realize we were talking for like 52 minutes. And then oh I'm my like, gosh. oh my God. And then like the little thing comes up because you can only have these lives for yeah. one hour. So I'm, just, I'm like, all right, we got to cut this short. Thank you so much. Got to go. Like it just kind of, and that's what I, I think... want it to be. I want it to be like a conversation. And I said yeah, general totally. questions because just in case there are some yeah. people who there are, they're like one word answers. And I'm like, okay, thank you so much. I yeah. appreciate that. Um, I do. I want to say one more thing about um, advice for younger athletes, because we talked about the injury, but um, in terms of respecting your body, especially for young women, I know in my career, like I really tried to take shortcuts by pushing my body to be or to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. So I always had this idea in my head that I had to be this certain weight in order to jump high which ultimately contributed to injury because I was under fueling and I wasn't well nourished and it really put a lot of stress on my body and on my mind. So again, in terms of injury and just respecting your body, like give yourself the time to progress. Like don't try to take shortcuts to reach your goals because you will pay later if you take a shortcut. And I know that from experience and I wish I just would have respected the process and taken each small step at a time and built some really good training and some really good healthy training over time instead of taking a shortcut and then paying for it later. So I hope wow. that people will take that to heart and just trust the training and fuel yourself properly and, and accept what your body is. Like if you're training as an athlete, your body is going to be strong. It's going to be what it needs to be to be able to do its job. You don't need to force it to be a certain way. And the one thing I definitely, I remember from you and Katie's conversation was, it's more of, you don't really, you don't know exactly what you weigh 
the day that you compete. And like, usually, because nobody really weighs themselves the morning of. Right. Um, and so for me, I know that during my best period that I was competing, I have no idea what weight I was the whole year. I have not a clue. And for me, I was so concerned with what am I eating? What's on my plate? What do I look like in pictures? Um, if I have a six pack the morning of, then I'll jump well. It was so superficial. And it was just yeah. something that I could I could have easily controlled if I would have just said, you know that you're taking care of your body. You know you're doing your workouts. As long mm -hmm. as you're eating healthy, you know how to make the right decisions and just show up and see how it goes. And so that's something that I'm taking now. Uh, and yeah. I never cared about it when I was younger. It was something that I never cared about. I just showed up and jumped when I was younger. I used to love to jump. And then there was a yeah. period after, when, after the Olympics, I had like an Olympic hangover. And I just was like, I'm not where I need to be. I'm not like everybody else. And I need to get to that other level. And what is it? And that was the one thing that was the big thing when people would see me randomly, they'd be like, oh, you need to lose weight. That was like the number one thing. And so that's for me, so, yeah. It's don't so even get me started because yeah. I mean, coaches will say things, strangers yeah. will say things. Yeah. I've had some man come up to me at a meet and tell me that you're a beefcake. And I'm like, thank you. Like I'm an elite athlete. I'm an Olympian. Like my body's fine. You know, like yeah. even if it's positive comments, I feel like it's just unnecessary. And I think our culture just contributes to all of that. So it is, yeah. it's difficult to foster a healthy body image in our culture in general. Yeah. And then adding on top of that, being an athlete in a skimpy little uniform yeah. with different pressures on you, people have ideas yeah. of how athletes are supposed to look. And if you don't fit that exact mold, it can be stressful. So yeah. I think we have a lot of work to do in that area, but it's just... I like what you said, like if you're doing your workouts and you're treating your body well, then you can trust that you're in a good place. Yeah. And something I've thought about lately is like, what if I put the energy and attention that I've had on fixing my body to be this perfect sports body and I put that on technique and sprints and watching film and yeah. journaling and all of those other things, guess what? I would probably be a heck of a lot better athlete. Absolutely. And then you know what would happen? Then I would trust my body. So yeah. <laughs> it's it's a process, it's, it's, but yes, and I think it is. It's something that I think, especially for females. I'm, I'm a female athlete. I don't know about male athletes, but for female athletes, I think it's something that we need to promote a little bit more. And again, we don't like. Yeah, we're in like you know bathing suits practically, and I hated not feeling. Uh, like the other athletes, but I need to realize that my body is what's been working for me and that there might be other athletes out there who are younger who might be like, you know what? I don't really care what other people think. She does it. She does. She's a, you know, she's amazing. She went to the Olympics. I can do it too. And if it's that little bit of, you know, um, what am I trying to say? Like if that's that little bit of like seeing me and giving that, that push, and if that's yeah. what they needed, then that's great. Because I'm inspiring somebody to just be themselves. And I yeah. can't believe that that's what people need, just to feel comfortable in their own skin. But that's, yeah, that's the culture that we live in. And so for me, I've loved this time because I did realize that. And that's what I'm taking out of this. Like, And my coach yeah. was so happy. She was like, thank God. Like, <laughs> yeah. now we well, can just train. <laughs> and I think that what younger athletes miss in translation when they're looking at professional athletes on social media is the 15 years of training. They don't see the 15 years of training behind these bodies. Okay. Yes. That's a lot of days of added workouts to create this strong body. So yeah. I think we need to just keep talking about that and reminding younger athletes that play the long game, trust where you're at. Yeah do your workouts and just trust, 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 trust. That yes. is the name of the game. Yep. So and I appreciate I that true. we can, you know, have this conversation and just remind young women that they're not alone and that they're perfect the way that they are. And just yep. focus on the love of your sport and focus on playing the game. That's amazing. Thank you so, so much. I'm so, yeah. so glad that you came on the show. I, I love our conversation. <laughs> Me too. 
I love you. Love I hope I get to see you soon in like the I next year. I really, really hope so too. I feel like everyone, <laughs> I feel like everyone that I've spoken to, I haven't seen in like over a year. And I'm like, I know. hopefully I can see you soon. Um, yeah. I really, I'm so excited for you and your journey. And I can't wait to see how you compete this upcoming season. And, um, you know, and I wish you all the success in the world. I do. I forgot a couple times before and he will kill me if I forget again. Okay. But we're going to okay. do Ken's Corner. Okay, Ken's Corner. Let's do Ken's it. Ken's Corner. Corner. Here I am. Ken, What's up? How you doing? Uh, Good. I don't see anything about track and field. Mm -hmm. This is Kelsey. What is your question? Um, so what sport would instantly be better if alcohol was mandatory? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Like, like to watch or to do it. Because that running and drinking do not go well together. They do have like a right. beer mile or something, right? I think it's so are you saying what sport would be better to watch with alcohol or what sport <laughs> would be better to do well, with now alcohol? Both. Now, now both that you brought it up. Oh my gosh, I have no idea. I feel like if you pole vaulted with alcohol in your system, that could be extremely detrimental. Um Give me does it have, some, to, be, give does it me, have to be track and field related? No. Oh, it could be anything. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Well, I feel like I feel like there could be some good drinking games with, like, curling or something. Like, watching curling. You know? Because yeah, that that's, like, right. I feel bad if you're into curling. But it's just pretty <laughs> boring to watch. Like, you know? <laughs> the Swiss so some of, yeah. some of those, like, offshoot Olympic sports would be really fun to play a drinking game too. Even tennis. Tennis could be a fun drinking game and that would be dangerous because there's a lot of points to be had in tennis. Yeah, that would be good. I think yeah. um, I would say tennis and basketball. I would definitely watch some drunk people playing basketball. Like, oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, that would be, that would be interesting for sure. Um, I don't know. I would be, too, yeah, I would be too scared to pull vault drunk. So oh my I've God, never tried sure. it. No. I absolutely could never do it. Absolutely. I do. I know one person, and I'm not going to throw them under the bus, but I do know one person who likes a couple shots of vodka before they pull ball. Yeah. That's not intense. me. I yeah. do know some throwers that have, like, the night before, they can just, like, have a couple beers, like, relax. And, like, when I say a couple, it's, like, five or six. And yeah. then, like, be good for the next day. And I'm like, uh, absolutely not. Like, no. there's no yeah, you way. You're not going to find me doing that, but I mean, hey, to each their own. <laughs> so hopefully I answered your question kind yes. of. I, I, I guess I'm not we're gonna that say fun. Curling. No, we're going to say curling. That's okay. The we'll try All right. and we'll let you know. We'll do what we're right. about with the Roomba and the Swiffer and we'll let you know how it goes. There you go. I like it. That's perfect. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. You're, I'm so happy so that you're so doing much. this. This is right up your alley and you're so good at it. So right. don't stop. Thank Keep you, going. Man. Thank you so, so much. I truly appreciate it. You're the best. One more hand. All right. Bye, guys. In the world and I will talk to you soon. Okay. Bye, girl. Bye. All right, guys, all done. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. And again, love yourself. Make sure that you're giving yourself enough grace and enjoy the journey. I love you guys, and I will see you guys tomorrow.